last time out we were looking at sliders. Today I wanted to give you a quick overview of buttons. So I'm going to create a new instrument. Done. I'm going to drag this over here. Done. And just pull that over here. Oh, again, we're just using this basic instrument. I'm just going to change the audio settings so it's going through Soundflower. Okay. Now, I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click button, which is a very simple widget. So, as with all widgets, button must take a bounds identifier, which determines the x, y, width and height of the widget. Of course you can move it over here, make it bigger and smaller. Uh, you can have text, which is on text and off text, so it can toggle as you push the button. And you need to have a channel. If you leave out text, it's okay to leave out text, I'm going to hit Control S to save this. And then you just get a simple button that says push me. Okay. So the channel for this button at the moment is but one. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to get the value of that button. So if you remember from the last time, we have this channel. And we have every widget. Every widget must have a channel associated with it. That channel can be either the value from this button. This widget can be accessed using chan get, so long as we pass it the same channel as what we have up here. So every time I push this button, kbot, this value variable kbot is going to be updated with the value of the button. And buttons are very simple, they just toggle between 0 and 1. So I can use a print k2 with kbot. I'm going to save this, control s. Okay, so we have a value down here. This is going to be a bit silly with a keyboard instrument, so I'm going to start this instrument to start playing from the very start and play for 100 seconds. Okay, so I'm going to take out the F0 3600. The purpose of that F statement was to tell CSUN to keep waiting for events from the keyboard, from this keyboard here. I'm going to replace that with an I statement which explicitly starts instrument 1 and tells it to start after 0 seconds and play for 100 seconds. I'm going to save that. So, now we can see down here, we can see this value is going to be updated every time I push this button. Okay? So button is just going to toggle between 0 and 1. Okay? If you want to do something each time the button toggles, you could do something like if changed and then kbut, which is the name of our button variable. So we can say if change is equal to 1, then print I'm a button and I feel okay. Okay, and then end. End if. So actually with print ks we have to provide a time. So we can just say 0. So we're going to print this as soon as we enter this code. So save, and now I'm going to push the button. I'm a button, and I feel OK. And if I hit it again, it says I'm a button, and I feel OK right beside it. If you want that to appear on a different line, you can use f backslash n, which is a carriage return. Now, I'm a button, and I feel OK. If you wanted to, say, trigger another instrument to play, I'm just going to do a quick example here. X bond one B three zero one A two oscillate A one. Uh, so frequency of four hundred, and then A two A two. Okay, so we have no way. We're not going to start this instrument. 
from the score. We want to start this instrument from up here. Okay. The idea here being that you can turn on a different effect or something like that using a button. So we can use the event opcode. Uh, so the event opcode takes a score character, which in this case is I, because we want it to start an instrument. It's going to take an instrument number, uh, a delay time for the instrument, and a duration for the instrument. And if we have P4 and P5, which in this case we don't. So the instrument number is 2, because I want to start instrument 2. So the number passed here is going to relate to the instrument that you want to start. So instrument 2, I don't want any delay and I want the duration to be, say, 3 seconds. Now save this. I want to push this button. Right. The reason why we can't just do something like this is because when this code runs, if I save it, it's going to trigger this instrument to play many, many, many times a second. So every K cycle, it's going to trigger this instrument to play. We will end up with thousands of instance, instances of this instrument. So we have to be sure that we put the brakes on the event opcode. And we only trigger it when we want to. Great. OK, that's buttons. There's a lot more you can explore with buttons um, in terms of how they look. You can check out the cabbage help file and go to the button entry and you can see there's different things like there's text, there's value sets in it to value, there's on colors, off colors, there's on colors for font and off colors for font. There's latched, um, that's an option that will, uh, it will trigger just a one and then it'll go back to zero once you let go of it again. So there's a few different options there that you can explore.